Good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the White House City Council meeting of November 16, 2021. As is usual, we will start with a moment of silence. And during this moment of silence, I would like to ask you all to you each be Lynn Oxendorf for a family in your mind. Lynn was a devoted and dedicated person to the city of Whitehall, holding many positions, including city council member, city council president, treasurer, and then mayor. She always held the best interests of the city close to her heart. It will be greatly missed. Please rise for a moment of silence. All that pleasure of reasons. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. <clears throat> Ogg, would you please call roll? James Present. Present. Morrison. Present. Bainley, Rodriguez. Present. Elmore. Present. Collison. Present. President Carr. Present. At this time, I accept a motion to excuse the absent member. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to excuse the absent member, please. Second. There was a motion by Mr. Cantor, second by Ms. Elmore, to excuse the absent member. Any discussions? Ms. Ogg, will you please call? Cantor? Yes. Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Thomas? Yes. The absent member has been excused. At this time, the approval of the minutes for the November 2nd, 2021 agenda and regular meeting minutes. Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. There's been a motion by Ms. Connison, second by Mr. Cantor, to adopt the minutes of the regular and agenda meeting. Any discussion? Ms. Hawk, please call roll. Cantor? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. The minutes have been approved. At this time, we have a spatial presentation <clears throat> by City Administrator Zach Woodruff regarding Ordinance 121 and 2021. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I, uh, I uh, we were, I think we're there. Let's see if I can. Well, see, I'm going to get this in a minute. But, uh, Mr. President, I appreciate uh, the time um, this evening. Um, not only. Uh, there we go. Um, I am going to ask uh, Jason Sudi uh, from OHM uh, to come up. We have a, a brief presentation uh, for council this evening uh, regarding uh, the commercial corridor uh, legislation that city council has before it. Um, and so with that, Jason, I'll turn it over to you. Um, if you want to come on up. Um, and I will, at the same time, try to uh, make sure that we are streaming because I don't think that uh, we are streaming yet. Jason, good evening. And please, you can like to remove your mask when you speak. That's I can't remove it. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, as we're getting rolling, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Jason Sudi with C. I'm with OHM, and it's been a pleasure to do work with the city over the years on a variety of things, including uh, the strategic vision that we put together a few years ago. And this is sort of the next evolution in that process. So very happy to be here today. And Jocelyn, um, my name is Jocelyn Gibson. I'm a senior consultant with Zone Co. based in Cincinnati, Ohio, and we are a sub consultant for this project. Uh, we have worked with Zone Co. on a lot of zoning codes and continue to work with them on a lot of zoning codes uh, throughout the entire state, uh, actually, throughout the region. And what we're going to do for you tonight is run through the basics of what we are um, bringing forward with regard to the initial zoning code changes here in Whitehall. Okay? Okay. 
What we are doing is moving through a two-step process, and that step, the two-step process is doing the initial commercial corridors this year, and then looking at a lot of the nuts and bolts of the administrative side in the residential districts next year. What we had done in, um, in establishing the vision for the community some years back is to talk about the need to do some changes that are fundamental with regard to the regulatory uh, approach in order to mesh with that vision. Unfortunately, uh, most cities in, in Ohio and really throughout much of this part of the country have fairly outdated codes. And what those codes do is they restrict the ability for you to easily implement the kind of development that you want. It's more cur uh, burdensome really for the community, it's more burdensome for the development community, it's more burdensome for the boards and commissions that administer those. And what you end up doing is giving a whole lot of variances in order to get the kind of development you want, and you're also in the process likely discouraging some folks who may want to do development very much in keeping with what you're trying to achieve. Uh, but they read your code and they know it's either going to be a, a much more uh, difficult battle or they're going to have to uh, employ some professionals that uh, will be a little bit more expensive for them and all that type of thing in order to work through the process of getting to where you need to go. Sorry, I thought the map was up there. I was going to refer to a map that you can't see. So what we have done is we've, as I said, broken this down into two sets of, of, uh, of efforts. In, in one part, in order to make sure we can more readily align what we have proposed in the vision with your code. And secondly, it is a bit of a burdensome process to go through a zoning code rewrite. We know that. And what we're trying to do is ease that sort of mental load and time load on you by doing the commercial corridors first. So that's Broad, Main, Yearling, and Hamilton. Then we're going to come back with the rest of that, as I said, once the next year starts. Um, let's see. It's going to be a heck of a lot easier if I can get this visual to work to, to kind of talk with you what you're doing, what we're doing. Um, but in the meantime, what we have done is we've taken these five initial districts that we've outlined and we have put them in the exact same sequential order. So every time you look through one of those sections, you'll see it's all the same subsections within. We're gonna do the same thing with the residential districts. That is for ease of your interpretation, ease of planning commission, ease of uh, developers, and property owners, and residents that are here in town, so that they can come and easily digest what's in the code. Right now, it's a lot of things in a lot of different places, which is very typical. What we've also done is tried to illustrate the code in a lot of different ways. We, yeah, yes, sure. Okay. Uh, we have done what we call typologies, and those are all at the end of these code sections, and again, I'll show you these in just a second. Those typologies are basically, for lack of a better term, little tiny drawings, little, little mini diagrams. And they show um, you, they show um, anyone who's trying to understand the code, the types of building frontages that we generally are hoping to see in those districts, the types of open space, the types of signs, and to do though that in a more graphically oriented way, so it's not just a bunch of words on the page. Uh, it is very difficult for, for <coughs> people, um, if you're not familiar with codes, to visualize exactly what we're talking about when we are dealing with different kinds of setbacks and different kinds of heights, so that just gives people a little bit more ease to understand what it is that we're trying to do. Um, the other thing I think that's important to note is that we have, we have right now in the city a whole bunch of different zoning districts that have sometimes very little difference and sometimes very large difference, but within a small geographical area. We're trying to smooth that out. And that's, again, pretty typical when you go through a zoning code process. What you want to do is simplify the districts as much as you can. Uh, and so what we've done is taken areas that had myriad districts that didn't really make a lot of individual sense and put those into an overall arching district that can really kind of capture the vision of what we're hoping to achieve in those particular areas. Um, what we have also done, as you'll see uh, here as we, we pull up the map shortly, is we've located the areas that have a really great opportunity for a larger concentration of denser uses. And those are areas that would tie into development that you're already undertaking. So for instance, you know, right over here on Broad and Hamilton where you've got a much denser development style than has been in Whitehall for some time, 
what we've done is expand that district. So um, it basically looks at that intersection, also looks at the intersection uh, down at Maine and in Hamilton and at Maine where it enters from the west side of, of the city. That has been done in order to create those densified nodes on high capacity transit corridors. Those are already transit corridors that exist and they are slated in a number of studies that are region wide and in some projects that are mm -hmm. ongoing that you know, I'm sure you're aware of to become even more efficient high density transit corridors. Um, and that's also part of a larger vision for the region that Warpsey has advocated, which we incorporated into our previous vision for the city, that we would look for ways to densify those particular corridors to have a greater impact, greater positive impact on not just the overall region, but the individual cities. That's a great chance for us to re-look really at the way some of these commercial corridors that have sort of evolved past their first round of use. Main Street's a great example. Um, you know, there were a lot of brand new big box stores on that street once upon a time that a lot of people went to. Now there's a lot of kind of husks of what that retail used to be, a lot of large parking lots, and ways that we can more efficiently redevelop that so we can get more businesses that are creating more revenue into Whitehall. At the same time, get more residents that can um, you know, basically support the way our overall city works and support those businesses. And so that's what we're trying to do with this code. So with the diagrams that we have up there, uh, let me show you and kind of walk through. Oh, you're gonna do it? Okay, sounds great. So if you flip to the next one, these zoning districts, um, are as proposed to you tonight. Um, again, these are always a bit of a work in progress, so we're eager to hear your input and the input of, of the citizens as we go forward. None of this is, is set in stone. It's really about the policy that you want to undertake. Let me just explain our philosophy and thought process behind this, and then that will help you to understand how you want to manipulate the borders of these as we go forward. Um, what we did is, as I mentioned, in that, in that kind of purplish blue area, those three nodes, that's the densest district. Those are the areas that we feel have the largest opportunity to redevelop based on the fact that it is, right now, largely underutilized. That's not to say every parcel isn't valuable or, or isn't well utilized, but as a whole, there certainly could be a lot more density there, and a lot of that is, at this point, especially along Main Street, either surface parking or kind of end-of-the-generation retail buildings that were built, and their life cycle is coming to an end, and they, and they need to be um, then we, we've also looked at the corridors in between there. So up on Broad Street, you can see in the red, what that is is an effort to try to emulate the best parts of what's already on Broad Street. We have some great things happening there now with regard to some office headquarters and some uh, good development that's been there for quite some time, some institutional uses. Try to find ways to fill in those gaps. Uh, jumping down to the purple on East Main Street, you'll see that we have opportunities there to maybe not be as aggressive with large-scale densification, but certainly to make a better pedestrian environment and recreate the development pattern that occurs there as it goes forward. Even if you do have some auto-oriented uses, you know, and that's not to say we won't have car washes or fast food or those kind of things, but we can do them in a way that's much more sensitive to the natural pedestrian environment of the city so we can have a balance of those uses with the actual good and urban characteristics as well. Uh, then Hamilton is uh, another district that has a little bit of a slight nuance, not dramatically different but than what it is now, but again, try to make it more pedestrian friendly um, and just have the opportunity to, to have potential redevelopment along there if, if so desired. And then finally, Yearling, um, probably the, the street that would um, be most similar to what it is now, but certainly there are opportunities down Yearling to look at new residential opportunities and some commercial modes with regard to residential, or I'm sorry, to neighborhood commercial. So uh, that's sort of the big picture, I'll get back to that at the end. Before I go any further, um, any initial questions before I dive into the meat of how the code works, and then we'll double back to sort of the philosophy of those districts in just a second. Okay, so let's press on, and Jocelyn's gonna help me. Uh, she is uh, instrumental in writing the nuts and bolts of this, and will be even more instrumental as we move forward into the administrative portion of the code next year because that is uh, truly uh, sort of like a little bit of a, a watchmaking exercise. You push and pull one thing and everything else moves. This, this first part isn't quite as delicate as that, which is why we wanted to undertake this first to get the framework in place. 
So I'll talk through uh, the initial part of these sections and I'll have Jocelyn fill you in on some of the details. Uh, the first is the intent. And as I said, every one of these districts will have the same sections, so it's easy to understand no matter which section you're in. We've also color-coded them. I apologize. Uh, I know some people uh, are colorblind. Uh, we did our best to try to at least differentiate that. If you can see colors, to understand how that relates back to the zoning map, um, well, we'll be able to find other ways, though, as we uh, finalize this, to differentiate these on the zoning map. Uh, if there's any kind of challenge with color, we can designate that by someone rolling over that. So. Uh, they can find out what district they're in. Uh, at any rate, the intent just spells out what we think that district could be, doesn't say what it will be, just what the, the possibilities are, and sets that up. Uh, then we go into permitted use building types. And this is a set of, as I called them before, typologies. That's just terminology we planners use again for having little pictures that show us what the heck to do. And we have a whole set of those at the end. And what each of these do is they refer to which of those pictures you can look back to to understand what you can do. Um, I'll have Jocelyn explain how that process works a little bit, and if you can just go forward one more, show you some examples of those. Okay. So, um, so what's the, um, move on to the next slide. Okay. Um, so as Jason <coughs> was saying, um, we've got the sections repeated, you know, through each district. So you know, you've got your uses, you've got your development standards, then you have what we call the typologies. And um, so building placement, um, you know, that's that's just a standard that tells you what your building envelope is, where you can build on a lot. Um, the building form, the massing of the building, um, we have graphics to explain that to the user. It will be very user friendly. Pardon me, can you speak more into the mic or pull the mic? Sure, microphone? sorry about that. Thank you. And we want to stress that these are just examples of the number of typologies that are in there. And also, we're not saying that that's exactly what the building needs to look like. All of these are just representative of the idea of what could be there. So in this case, the idea of a yard and a street wall basically means that you could have an area behind your sidewalk that had a small area of grass and or landscape or whatever it is. But that would indicate you wouldn't have parking between the edge of the street and the front of the building and that typology. The street wall shows that you could have parking on the side, but we want that to be screened in some kind of way. Maybe a wall, or maybe something else, a hedge. Uh, that's just, again, giving an idea of what's there, not saying this is exactly what has to be in that district. Um, and especially where you're, the intent of your districts, there's a very specific intent, whether that be pedestrian orientation. Um, the, typolog the typologies just help give certainty in the design and the interaction with the street so you don't get sort of um, you know, like Jason said, you know, where you're trying to create a pedestrian environment, you don't get, you know, a bunch of curb cuts and a big parking lot out front. Um, so, so that's, that's the intent of those. Um, next slide. Again, parking placement will delineate those things. The signage, the signage has been tailored by district. As I said, you know, I'll, I'll use the example of pedestrian orientation. You know, if you have, if you're walking on the sidewalk, the way you're going to view a sign, the sign is, is a giant, you know, um, sign, you know, that's not that's not conducive to the pedestrian environment. So we, we orient all those things to sort of the intent of the district. Um, permitted open space types, again, um, this just sort of creates some certainty around the kind of environment that we want to see. Um, open space is an important part of the sort of livability of design of these buildings, and so we've integrated this into, um, into the standards as well. And you can see they're very diagrammatic. I mean, that doesn't mean like you have to have a strip of green down the right side of your site. That just means that there could be an open space within this district that could serve as a gathering space for those uh, you know, surroundings that is, is soft state. So again, just sort of giving that, that context. Um, and then each section will, of course, describe the permitted land uses. And we've, um, we've sort of modernized your existing land uses. We've, um, so we've taken what you have, we've modernized it, we've we also provided definitions, so where we thought your current definitions were lacking, you'll see that at the end of the section. So we did revise those as well to give more certainty, ease of administration, all those things. Justin, just real quick, can you explain why the permit requirements section is blank now and how that could change in the next? Right, so, so um, as we go through the next sections of the code, there might be specific standards that apply to uses that we'll work through you know, as we 
we, as we go through engagement with you all, as we go through engagement with the community, there could be standards that apply to specific uses. So there, there's a section there that might contain a reference at some point. So if there are specific standards for a use, it might not, you know, it might be a specific district might have, you know, um, you know, a certain use might might be allowed to exist without restrictions in one district, but there might be some um, might be some restrictions in different districts. So you'll be able to reference what that is so that you know you, you can see exactly where you need to go to find all of the regulations that you need for your property. So as any governments jump in, today in our code, for example, like an adult daycare is a special permit, but there are certain other code sections that deal with the area regulations and the additional requirements for that business. So in this case, you know, if you just look at the you know, accessory uh, use of the first one there, you know, there will be a code section somewhere that will define out further regulations. Um, so, before we jump into just kind of defining with, with some very, you know, general um, character images to give you a sense of that, the one thing I do want to remind ourselves of and, and, you know, you and everybody here who's, who's uh, you know, come to see what it is we're talking about, codes are a work in progress. Um, we know that there are going to be things that are changed. What we tried to do when we put those standards together. Um, I, I worked on codes for many years. Jocelyn works on codes constantly, as I said, all over the region, and every community is a little bit different. What we think about is how we want the district to turn out, and then we look to assign standards that can most closely allow that to happen, while also trying to discourage things that we don't want to have happen there. But we're never gonna get it perfectly right. Um, it's gonna be part of the interpretation of planning commission and council and what um, the development community is bringing in and what the, you know, the people who are selling or not selling their property are willing to do. So those are a lot of things that kind of boil into a code and we're fully aware that both in this process, you know, you'll have suggestions and that's completely reasonable. Uh, those suggestions to tweak and alter, you know, dimensions or uses or really anything is just part of this process. And then also, uh, it's really healthy for communities to have a code that does evolve. One of the problems is that I think it's kind of, uh, well, I know it is, it's, it's a little bit exhausting to go through the mental exercise of updating your code, and then you're kind of, whoosh, all right, we'll get back to that in 40 years. And unfortunately, that doesn't work out very well. So what typically ends up happening once a code is adopted is, uh, you know, a community thinks about what is and isn't working after a period of like a year or so and tends to make a series of small tweaks. So while this seems like it can be earth shattering to upend a whole code and replace it with a new code, it's really not as final as it feels because we still have the opportunity to do those tweaks and in many other communities, you know, they'll have just small elements that they may adjust every year. You know, a tiny example can be just down the road in Bexley, they redid their whole code, and then they found out that everybody in town for some reason wanted to build, park, uh, build new garages that were like three feet taller than what their code allowed. So they were wrangling with that issue for an entire year with people trying to get variances. And so a year later they decided, you know what, it's okay if those are three feet taller. Let's just make the standard three feet taller. And that's what they did. And they you know, had probably about a dozen or so of those tweaks. And they adjusted some uses. They did all these other things. So right now, the big thing is to get the, the, pick, the, you know, the framework right. Get the big issues right. If there are major issues that you just feel aren't being hit as you go through this process in the next two months, let's change those. And then as we go into next year, when we're doing all the nuts and bolts, we can hopefully really nail those down and, and make sure we're having the right result. So with that, just let me run through a few remaining slides to give you a little bit more of a picture in your head. Hopefully everybody who's here uh, can help them as well. Um, this is Broad Street, and it kind of runs you know, from where we come in on the west all the way down almost to Hamilton, not quite. North of that is you know, more of the military, industrial, and industrial zone, which, we're, again, we're going to deal with next year. Uh, if you'll flip to the next one, Zach, what, what I want to stress, these are just character images. These are not recommendations for what is or is not going to be built there. These are things that could be built underneath the new code and that we've seen built elsewhere, largely in central Ohio, when we think could be really successful. You know, office is already on that street. You could have more of it. You could have a mix of uses. You could have uh, pure residential on the previous slide. Uh, there's a whole number of things that you could have on Broad Street that would augment what's already there. If you flip to the next one, Main Street District. 
These are things, if you flip to, to the, the next uh, shot, these are happening right now on Main Street, just down the road. These are two projects in the city of Bexley. Um, one is about 10, 12 years old, and the other one is just about three or four years old. Um, that's aspirational for the kind of things we could have here. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you and say that every spot that's a giant big box parking lot is gonna be full of buildings like this, because that's, first of all, just not gonna happen anytime in the next short time period. The real estate market's just not gonna support it that quickly. But I am saying that there are areas where this could happen, and in between there, if you flip to the next one, you can still have better versions of the other stuff. You don't have to have a giant parking lot with a tiny little store in the back and eight million curb cuts. You can have something as simple as a Bob Evans or a fast food restaurant, have a lawn in the front with a front door and a sidewalk, and parking on the side, and regulate the way that works. Uh, you can have brand new development. That's a, a brand new um, set of shops right in Clintonville. And that's very doable, uh, a set of one-story shops that can take the place of this kind of chasm of parking that we have right now that's underutilized and really transform the character of the way the Main Street Corridor works. And it's very with, much within the, um, the capabilities of developers to do that because they're doing it all over the city. And you know, there's no reason Whitehall should deserve the same level of quality development. Uh, going into South Hamilton District, again, just upgrading some of that street frontage, just a couple character images. Um, if you go to the next one, the idea of, again, pulling some of these, you know, not as tall, just several story tall or, or less um, opportunities there. Now, there's already a lot of houses that have been converted into businesses. They could stay indefinitely and be integrated with one or two lots in between or along there that could harbor some of these new businesses. So, you know, it's a great opportunity. Not, none of this is about wiping out an area. It's about augmenting an area as you go forward with the decisions that individual people make when they want to sell or not sell again. And then one more, if you will, Zach, this is, you know, like the scale of residential you could potentially have there. Um, you know, there's a ton of, of car lots right along uh, that portion of South Hamilton. I just bought a car there. I'm, I'm obviously a supporter of those car lots. That being said, we don't know where the auto industry is going, you know, 20 or 30 years from now. There may be opportunities to start to think about repositioning some of that area into things like multi-story residential that can support what we're trying to do throughout the rest of the world. And then if you go into yearling, this again, probably more similar to what we already have now. That being said, there's opportunity in certain areas where you might be able to have some more uh, you know, low scale um, townhouses that could be for rent or for sale. That could be traditional style like on the left, more modern style on the right. Really this code doesn't dictate that. It just dictates sort of the, the, the framework and the overall scale, and then within that, it's up to the community to work through that process. Um, and then you could also have small commercial nodes that could be throughout uh, the, the key spots on your line, and those could be complementary to the, uh, the institutional, such as the school, this building, uh, the other services that already exist. And it's already a pretty, pretty good walk of street, so that would be great. Then the areas of the most dense development, Community Crossroads District. And this is the last one we'll talk about. If you want to flip to this next one, this one could be very dense. This is where we're envisioning you're starting to get the kind of development that other suburbs are now starting to see. You're starting to see things in Dublin at, uh, at Bridge Park. Am I going to tell you you're going to get three Bridge Parks here overnight? No, but you can start to get that scale of development in those nodes as you transform the way your, um, your code allows it, and it starts to marry with the overall vision. Excuse me. Um, the other thing that I, I mentioned earlier that's very exciting is there are two locally preferred alternatives that we're moving forward for mass transit uh, as far as the BRT system, and it's likely that you know either Maine or Broad will soon have a really augmented high capacity transit system. This is the kind of complementary development that can occur with that. You can start to get, again, a mix of uses, residential, um, a walkable environment in those nodes that can be way more densified, and it does kind of a couple great things. One, it tends to bring a lot of revenue into the city and a lot of new residents, but it also doesn't usually overburden the school system because dense residential compact development tends to generate a much lower number of individual school kids, and it's really a different kind of, of market that typically 
So with that, that's just, again, big vision. None of those are prescriptive, just the idea. I'm happy to take your questions. Um, and then you know, I'll be around later on to help uh, Zach answer any questions that, that individuals have after the meeting. Any questions from the So if, if there are no additional questions uh, from council, uh, what I would say uh, to folks here, um, Jason and the team and I will be here after council to answer any questions you all may have or uh, you know, hear any concerns you may have. How do you do that after the meeting? Um, but if council has uh, no additional questions, then uh, I thank you all very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you both for coming in this evening. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah, thank you. That now brings us to our first poll public of the evening. And I invite anybody to come forward if they have anything to say. Please know you need to please state your name, your address, and you'll have three minutes to discuss. Well, I'm a little um, late to this whole subject. Oh, yeah. sorry, Jacqueline Thompson. What else do you need to know? Your address. Uh, pardon me? Your address. I'm on Maplewood Avenue, but I prefer not to give my house number since it would be public. I thought we did away with that on full public for that reason, for safety reasons. But anyway, I'm a little late to this um, on this redevelopment and the apartment that's going in at the end of my street. And I, are you people kidding me? Um, I see all these beautiful pictures. That's not the way it's developing down at my end of uh, Main Street. Uh, Main Street, we've got the laundry at the end of my street with trash all over the ground. We've got the plasma place. We've got children's services. We have a new apartment with subsidized housing going in. We know how this is developing on my end. I see all these pretty pictures here. That's not the way it's going at our end. And another thing I'd like to mention is Maplewood, Collingwood, and Robinwood are the only through streets from Main Street to Broad Street until you get to Yearling Road, which is already commercialized apartments, city buildings, and so forth. So where are these people going to go when you develop all of this? They're going to come down Maplewood, Collingwood, and Robinwood. We are already drowning with traffic. Yep. The neighbors on both sides of me, they've had their cars hit when they had them parked out front because of the speeders and the amount of traffic on each side of me. And we also have a problem, and you know it very well, for years with the rental properties, the single family rental properties on our street. And you do nothing to regulate that or do anything to hold these landlords accountable. And here you're going to bring in apartments, subsidized housing. We have Kroger's and Target at one end and all of town and country and on the other end we have Walmart. Where do you think the traffic goes when they want to get from one to the other? It comes right down our street. We already have that and now you're putting a couple hundred extra cars that may be going down our street every day. Our streets are three and all of our streets in between. This is not a development plan. Is it your intention to destroy our neighborhood because you're doing a heck of a good job of it? You do nothing to protect us now with what we're dealing with, and now you're going to develop that, and we know, as I said, what that development is going to be at our end of town. You got rid of all your low-income housing, rental housing, apartments and everything down at that better end where you're developing all the nice things in Whitehall. You got rid of all that, and you're bringing it down to our area. We already have. We're on the westernmost street in Whitehall. We already have the problems with crime coming over from Columbus and pulling behind us. You, Mr. Cantor, ought to know that because your brother's dog was shot when kids came over from there. So we're already dealing with the effects of low-income housing. Now, I have no problem with it, but this isn't... I mean, what are we supposed to do? Is it your intention to destroy our neighborhood? Because you're doing a pretty good job of it already. And now you're going to bring all of this into our neighborhood? The foot traffic, the trash that's tossed on our streets, 
I can't go out sometimes and work in my yard because the fumes are so bad from the cars that are on there now. And you're going to bring this all to our neighborhood. And where else are they going to cut over from Main to Broad Street to these businesses that you're going to develop all along there? They're, at our end, they're going to have to come down our three streets Thompson, and the you, cross you hit, streets. You've hit your three minutes. Pardon me? You've hit your three minutes. Okay. Thank you. that was ruled as insufficient. Supreme Court slapped the district attorney on that one. But then you guys came back and decided that, gosh, let's take it off the ballot because we know y'all are gonna vote it down and then we can't do anything. So then what we discover is that in the process of this big zoning change that snuck in there is that little corner <coughs> where y'all are gonna go ahead and wrap this all in a big pretty bow that's basically saying with big middle finger at us, we're gonna do it anyway. Which is why the Woda Cooper Company stopped returning our calls when we wanted to question. So you guys 
Looks like you won that little battle. Really does. But what you need to understand is that we're angry, and there's a lot of us now. We're becoming a movement, actually. And we can make a difference. And we are going to make a difference. And we have people looking into this now, figuring out how do we bring this back to the courts, because we know the courts aren't going to look favorably on the antics. Okay? You have council people sending their husbands into our meetings telling us we can't ask the questions the way we want to ask them. Um, you're doing everything that you can to suppress our voice. And I just want to let you know it's not going to happen, okay? Because you've gone too far now. We're very angry. We are, our voice is loud. We have deep pockets. And we've got a lot of contacts, okay? And you've gone too far. And one of the first things we probably ought to do is think about having high-level people who live somewhere else like Pickerington, making decisions here that look real pretty on their resume, but they don't have to deal with down the road. That might be the first place they go. Either that or recall the city attorney. Not sure. Thank you. My name is Clinton Elmore. I live at 645 Fairway Boulevard. And I would like to let it be known for the record that I wasn't sent to any meeting. I attended a meeting that was open to Whitehall citizens and posted as such. The only comment I made at that meeting was for those that asked questions to kindly let Woda Cooper answer the question. I had, please do not interrupt me. I also added that I thought the questions were very good questions. And I thought in the interest of the citizens being heard and Woda Kupi being heard, that they'd be allowed to answer the questions that were asked. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs>
just like worried about what's happening in the world and in the United States, and now I'm feeling worried about what's happening in this small town. And if you you can explain what happened with the emergency um, verbiage, then I would appreciate hearing that from you. Um, because it's worrisome. We have a park also going behind our house that's extending all the way to 70. But the low income housing and all that back there, even when we just had the power lines going in, we had people behind our homes on those gravel roads, at the, you know, the construction road, doing all kinds of things back there. And we're worried about that parking back there. And who do we call when we hear gunfire, when we hear drugs or prostitutes back there? Who are we calling? It's Whitehall's jurisdiction, but the city of Columbus is buying it. It's all happening so fast. And we feel very left out of any of the decision making. That's all I have to say. If you can explain what happened with the emergency um, verbiage, that would be appreciated. Thank you. Okay. Recognizing no one else coming forward, I will now move to the committee reports. <coughs> Administration of Financial Management, uh, Chairperson Bailey is not with us this evening. Mr. Rodriguez, would you please? Thank you. Um, Administration of Financial Management last, met last Tuesday, minutes are on file. There's a number of uh, items on the uh, agenda this evening. I'll be taking care of those for Mr. for uh, Councilman Bailey and uh, Meet again next Tuesday sometime at 30. Thank you very much. Community and Elder Advocacy, Chairperson Elmore. Thank you, Mr. President. Community and Elder Advocacy met last Tuesday. Our minutes are on file. We have no pending legislation or legislation to discuss today. We will meet again next Tuesday, 6.30. Thank you. Thank you. Community Standards and Enforcement, Chairperson Rodriguez. Thank you. Uh, community Standards and Enforcement met last Tuesday. Minutes are on file. Meet again, uh, one item on the agenda this evening, and we'll meet again next Tuesday after sometime at 6.30. Very good, thank you. Economic Development, Chairperson Morrison. Thank you, Mr. President. Economic Development also met last Tuesday. Our minutes are on file. We have one piece of legislation up for consideration this evening. Very good. Infrastructure, Maintenance, <coughs> and Services, Chairperson Heck. Thank you, Mr. President. I was not there, but Infrastructure, Maintenance, and Services did meet last Tuesday. Our minutes are on file. We have no pieces of legislation up for voting tonight, and we will meet um, next Tuesday sometime after 6.30. Okay. Public Safety, Chairperson Connison. Thank you, President Potter. Public Safety also <coughs> met last week. Our minutes are on file, and we'll meet again on Tuesday around 6.40. Great. And finally, Parks and Recreation, Chairperson Panther. Thank you, Mr. President. Parks and Recreation met last week. Our minutes are on file. We do have one piece of uh, legislation tonight. We'll meet again next week sometime after 6.30 right here. Okay. Uh, officials reports. Mayor Magnin. Good evening, everyone. And I do appreciate everyone coming out tonight and expressing your concerns uh, regarding uh, plans for the future for the city of Whitehall. Uh, and any plans that are put into effect will certainly not only affect now, but affect up to 40, 50, and 60 years from now. Because we've seen the effects, unfortunately, of poor planning before. And that's how we've got into some of the situations we're in now. Because there was no plan before. Things just back in the 50s and 60s went up willy-nilly. and. Uh, that's somehow got us into the situation uh, in which we are now. Uh, I would just like to ask uh, Council's uh, favorable consideration on uh, the supplemental appropriation for, uh, from the uh, American Rescue Plan grant fund to the American Rescue Grant expense account. We had a uh, Unfortunately, uh, our salaries are dipping low, in, especially in fire department and some in police department due to the fact that we've had to spend so much more overtime on COVID-related related issues as we respond to our residents' needs, uh, especially fire department and medical. So uh, the American Rescue Plan grant 
is to uh, was uh, put into effect by the federal government in order to help cities when we are having these problems. So I ask for your uh, consideration and passage of that ordinance tonight. Thank you. Thank you. City Attorney, Michael Bettis. Thank you, Mr. President, members of council. Thank you, everyone, for coming out this evening. Um, I was sitting here listening to uh, the poll public, and I was almost hesitant to think uh, that I would say anything, but I think I might say something at this moment. Um, Colin Powell said something that um, was impactful, where he said that we are now living in a society where we are living based on lies and living with insults. The quote goes on to say more, but I won't repeat what the quote goes on to say more because I don't want to enrage or engender any type of anger from any of the people that are in this room at this moment. However, what I would like to speak to the public about at this moment, because one person by the name of Lana Pennington had the nerve to say that the Supreme Court slapped me as it related to the petition that was circulated in the, in the city of Whitehall. And for that matter, let me make this as my official statement as the city attorney. I am completely honored and privileged to be the city attorney of the city of Whitehall. I've been a practicing lawyer for over, for since 2003. I've had the honor and privilege of representing thousands of clients. I've been on the right side of the law as it relates to getting not guilty verdicts. I've been on the other side of the law where I've gotten guilty verdicts. I've never felt slapped by, this, by any court when it disagreed with my decisions. I've always looked at the law as it relates to the way that I'm supposed to as a practicing lawyer with impartiality and with the sense that the court can make its decision. And while the Ohio Supreme Court overruled years of prior case law as it related to the issue related to the petitions, let me make it very clear to everyone in this room. I'm very honored that the Supreme Court now opened up the door to make it easier for citizens to file referendum petitions throughout the state of Ohio. And even though that decision ran over my toes as a practicing attorney, I am honored that now all citizens throughout the state of Ohio can file referendum petitions and the Supreme Court made it easier to do so. That was a win for us all. At the time that I, that I, that I answered everything as it related to the petitions, I was following the law. And if Lana Pennington had integrity, she would say to all of you, look at the decision. The decision from the Supreme Court in, while it did not grant attorney fees, said that I had a valid basis for making my decision. That was from the Supreme Court. That was where I've always been. I never had any intent to harm anyone. I never had any intent to stop you from doing anything. It was not a personal grudge. It was me following what I felt was the law and, that, and I will do that again because I will follow the law to the best of my ability because that is my charge. I have been an oath keeper of the United States Constitution since I was in the United States Marine Corps. I've taken that oath again when I, when I swore to the Supreme Court of the state of Ohio that I would practice law. And I've taken that oath again when I was proudly elected to be your Whitehall City Attorney. And I will do that every single time and I will follow the law and I will not apologize for that. That being said, today in the city attorney's office, one thing I would like to proudly announce is that the Derek Owens Group, which is my diversion program, because here's another thing, public, you need to understand. I am a staunch believer that justice has to be tempered with mercy. So in our mayor's court, we have a diversion program where we've been able to provide opportunities to individuals that are in our mayor's court with job opportunities, with licensing uh, renewals, with getting off drugs and alcohol, and we've got some great stories that have come from that. But from that, the Derek Owens Group has now been expanded, and their grant has now been renewed, 
and they will be able to continue to provide the services to the city of Whitehall for free. It does not cost you any money to do so. That is a win. Next, outside of the city attorney's office, because I always like to bring things home and let you know just how much of a small world it is. If any of you saw the Adele uh, concert just the other day, there is a proposal that was done for the whole world to see where Adele had the crowd uh, go silent and a young man came out with a young lady and proposed to her in front of Adele, the world, Oprah, everyone. Well, I am proud to say that that young lady was my cousin, Ashley Mann, who is a Central Ohio resident, Central Ohio native, and I'm just floored, which to let you know how much of a small world it is, you are at least one degree away from that proposal. So I'm so proud of Ashley. I don't know if she's watching uh, right now. Sometimes she does. But congratulations to Ashley and Quentin. I am so proud of you. Last, but certainly not least, so that you bring this home. And you're getting this first, City, City of Whitehall residents, as well as members of council, because it has not been announced yet. It might be in the Columbus Dispatch tomorrow. But the YWCA every year recognizes individual women as it relates to their commitment to empowering women, women to uplift the community, to fight bias, as well as to just be an overall inspiration. I am proud to announce in advance that one person who has inspired me to be married for over 23 years will be recognized as a woman of achievement by the YWCA, Joy L. Bivens. I am so proud of you. Congratulations. She's one of six. Thank you for that party. So thank you, members of council. Thank you, members of the public, for coming out. I yield my time. Thank you. That was quite a font of information and very good at that. Uh, City Auditor Dan Miller is not with us this evening. City Administrator, Zach Winter. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no official report this evening. Director of Public Safety, Van Greg is not with us this evening. Uh, Treasurer Steve Quinzel. Thank you, Mr. President. It's good to be back in Whitehall, uh, but I have no official report for tonight. Thank you. The following official reports have been filed in the council office since the last meeting. And those items would include the auditor's expense report for October 2021, the auditor's bank report for October 2021, the auditor's statement of cash position report for October 2021, the Auditor's Revenue Report for October 2021, and the Mayor's Report to Council for October 2021. Under Communications, Petitions, and Claims, we have three items listed this evening. Uh, first one being Notice from the Ohio Division of Liquor Control for a change of LLC membership interests of the C1-C2 D6 Liquor Permit for Speedway LLC DBA Speedway 9744, 1055 South Hamilton Road, Whitehall, Ohio, 43213. Second item is the agenda for the November 4th, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. And the last item is the minutes for the October 7th, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. Uh, Ms. Ogg, would you please call roll as to whether each member of council was given a copy of each item of legislation listed on the agenda prior to the meeting and including any add-on legislation? Cantor? Yes. Pat? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connorson? Yes. Thank you. We have no legislation for consideration under third reading tonight, which will now bring us to second reading. We have Ordinance 105, 2021, accepting certain storm and sanitary easements from Morton Crossing Apartments, LLC, on parcel numbers 090, 008, 413, 000, 000, 008, 415, I'll repeat that, that was 413, excuse me, uh, 090, 008417, 090 008 422, and 090 008 423. Mr. President, I wish to introduce ordinance 105 2021, a move for special order. Second. Uh, Mr. Morrison, second by Mr. Cantor, has introduced ordinance 105 2021, requesting suspension of all rules. Is there any discussion on the motion? Ms. Hall, please call the roll. Cantor? Yes. Pat? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connorson? Yes. The rules have been suspended. 
Move to adopt. Second. Motion to adopt by Mr. Morrison, second by Mr. Cantor. Any discussion? Ms. Hall, please call the roll. Cantor? Yes. Pat? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Ordinance 105 2021 <coughs> has been adopted. Ordinance 107 2021. Approving and making a supplement appropriation in the amount of $98,400 from the Debt Service Fund 401 to the Debt Service Account 401.000.50,000 and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce Ordinance 107 2021, moved with the suspension of all rules. Second. Uh, motion has been made by Mr. Rodriguez, second by Mr. Morrison to introduce Ordinance 107 2021 and suspend all rules. Any discussion? Ms. All, please call the roll. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. The rules have been suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to adopt. Second. Motion to adopt by Mr. Rodriguez, second by Mr. Morrison. Any discussion? Ms. All, please call the roll. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. Ordinance 107 2021 has been adopted. Under first reading, we have Ordinance 113, 2021, which we read by title only, amending Chapter 541 of the City of Whitehall, codified ordinances entitled Offense Against Persons Adding Source of Income to Provide Fair Housing Opportunities for Individuals and Their Families, regardless of the source of income to pay for such accommodations. Again, that's by title only. Ordinance 114, 2021, will be read by title only. Make the appropriation for current general fund 101 expenses, street 201 expenses, and state highway material expenses 211, expenses during the period from January 1st, 2022 to December 31st, 2022, in the total sum of $37,919,628 and declaring an emergency. Uh, also by title only is ordinance 115, 2021, Authorizing and approving the following changes to 161.38 and declaring an emergency. Ordinance 116-2021, approving and making a supplement appropriation of $1,805,000 from unappropriated monies in the Debt Service Fund 401, the Debt Service Account 401.000.50,000 and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce Ordinance 116-2021, move with suspension of all rules. Second. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, second by Ms. Connison, has introduced Ordinance 116-2021 and with a request to suspend all rules. Is there any discussion? Ms. Hogg, please call the roll. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. The rules have been suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to adopt. Second. Motion to adopt by Mr. Rodriguez, second by Ms. Connison. Any discussion? Ms. Hogg, please call the roll. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. Ordinance 116, 2021 has been adopted. Ordinance 117, 2021, approving and making a supplement appropriation of $9,840,000 from unappropriated monies in the Debt Service Fund 401, the Debt Service Account 401.000.50,000, and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce Ordinance 117, 2021, move with suspension of all rules. Second. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Ba uh, Mr. Rodriguez, second by Mr. Morrison, has introduced Ordinance 117, 2021, requesting the suspension of all rules. Is there any discussion? Ms. Hall, please call roll. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. The rules have been suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to adopt. Second. Motion to adopt by Mr. Rodriguez, second by Mr. Morrison. Any discussion? Ms. Hall, please call roll. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connorson? Yes. Ordinance 117, 2021 has been adopted. Ordinance 118, 2021, approving and making a supplement appropriation of $11,000 from unappropriated monies in the general fund 101 the Workers' Compensation Account 101-900-51013 and declaring emergency. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce Ordinance 118-2021, move with suspension of all rules. Second. Mr. Rodriguez, <coughs> second by Ms. Connison, has introduced Ordinance 118-2021 with a request to suspend all rules. Is there any discussion? 
Miss Hawk, please call the roll. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. <laughs> yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. The rules have been suspended. Thank you. Move to adopt. Second. Motion to adopt by Mr. Rodriguez, second by Ms. Connison. Any discussion? <clears throat> Ms. Hawk, please call the roll. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Ordinance 118 2021 has been adopted. Ordinance 119 2021 will be read by title only, making an appropriation for certain special revenue, internal service, and fiduciary accounts for the calendar year 2022 in the total sum of $15,746,287.28. Ordinance 120, 2021. Ordinance to impose a moratorium on marijuana cultivation, processing, and dispensing in the city of Whitehall and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce Ordinance 120, 2021. Move for the suspension of all rules. Second. I've uh, been a motion by Mr. Rodriguez, second by Mr. Cantor to introduce Ordinance 120, 2021, and move to suspend all rules. Great discussion. Ms. Ong, please call the roll. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. The rules have been suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to adopt. Second. A motion to adopt by Mr. Rodriguez, seconded by Mr. Cantor. Any discussion? Ms. Otto, please call the roll. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. Ordinance 120 has been adopted. Ordinance 121-2021 will be read by title only, amending section 122.02 titled Zoning Map and Districts and creating 1123.11 .11, titled Commercial Corridor Zoning Districts and Declaring Emergency. This now moves us on to Ordinance 122-2021, which will also be read by title only, <coughs> accepting the addition of parcel 090-005-410 and parcel 090-001-974 to lot seven, accepting the subdivisions of lot seven to the office at Norton Crossing. Ordinance 123, 2021, authorizing and approving an amendment to the codified ordinances of the City of Whitehall 161.37F, table of authorized personnel for the fiscal year 2022 and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce ordinance 123, 2021 and move for the suspension of the rules, please. Second. Mr. Cantor, with a second by Ms. Thompson, has introduced Ordinance 123-2021 and requested the suspension of all rules. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Ms. Ong, please call the roll. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. The rules have been suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to adopt, please. Second. Motion to adopt by Mr. Cantor, second by Ms. Connison. Any discussion? Ms. Ong, please call the roll. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. Ordinance 123-2021 has been adopted. Ordinance 124-2021, approving and making appropriation transfer in the amount of $7,000 for various expense accounts to the utility expense account 101-950-53,800 and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, mm -hmm. What was that? I said something. I'd like to introduce, introduce Ordinance 124-2021, move for the suspension of all rules. Second. Uh, motion by Mr. Rodriguez, second by Ms. Elmore, to introduce Ordinance 124-2021 and to suspend all rules. Is there any discussion? Ms. Ogg, please call roll. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connorson? Yes. The rules have been suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to adopt. All right. Second. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, second by Ms. Elmore, have moved for the adoption of Ordinance 124 2021. <coughs> Any discussion? Ms. Ogg, please call roll. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connorson? Yes. Ordinance 124 2021 has been adopted. Ordinance 125. 2021. Authorizing the mayor to apply for and accept a Bulletproof Vest Partnership BVP grant, authorize the creation of the 2021 Bulletproof Vest Expense Account 267.000.54000 
advancing $8,550 from the Law Enforcement Trust Fund 241, the Bullproof Vest Grant Fund 267, making and approving a fund transfer in the amount of $8,550 to the Law Enforcement Trust Fund 241, the Bullproof Vest Grant Fund 267, making an appropriation of $17,100 from the 2021 Bulletproof Vest Grant Fund to the 2021 Bulletproof Vest Expense Account and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce Ordinance 125-2021 and move for the suspension of all rules. Second. A motion by Ms. Connison, second by Ms. Elmore to introduce Ordinance 125-2021 and to suspend all rules. Is there any discussion? Ms. Ogg, please call roll. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. The rules have been suspended. Move to adopt. Second. Motion to adopt by Ms. Connison, second by Ms. Elmore. Any discussion? Ms. Ogg, please call roll. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. Ordinance 125 2021 has been adopted. Ordinance 126-2021, authorizing a supplemental appropriation in a total sum of $217,000 from unappropriated monies in the American Rescue Plan Grant Fund 209 to the American Rescue Plan Grant Expense Account 209.000.50,000 and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce Ordinance 126-2021, move to suspension of all rules. Second. Mr. Rodriguez, with a second by Mr. Cantor, have introduced Ordinance 126-2021 and a motion to suspend all rules. Is there any discussion? Ms. Ogg, please call us. Yeah. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. The rules have been suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to adopt. Second. And a motion to adopt, second by Mr. Cantor. Any discussion? Ms. Ogg, please call us. Roll. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. Ordinance 126, 2021 has been adopted. Resolution 32, 2021, resolving to approve then and now certificates and declaring an emergency. Mr. President, I'd like to introduce resolution 32, 2021, move for suspension of all rules. Second. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez, second by Mr. Morrison, have introduced resolution 32, 2011, and with a request to suspend all rules. A discussion. Ms. Ogg, please call the roll. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. The rules have been suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to adopt. Second. The motion to adopt by Mr. Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. Second by Mr. Morrison. Any discussion? Ms. Ogg, please call the roll. Cantor? Yes. Heck? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Connison? Yes. Resolution 32, 2021 has been passed. This now brings us to our second poll public of the evening. Uh, same rules apply. Uh, if you'd like to come forward, please state your name and address for the record. Uh, you'll be held to three minutes. And for folks who have already spoken, this would be an opportunity to speak on a different subject, not the same subject as you may have already spoken to before. Some color, I think, but she's got clerk of council has something. Oh, I'm color. sorry. Jerry, will you forgive us for one moment? You... And I, I apologize, I didn't ask you to read that in earlier. We're going to get it in now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jeff Thoburn, 466 Maplewood Avenue, Whitehall, Ohio. I wish to be brief with this poll public because I know council has a lot on their plates and perhaps up their sleeves so as to facilitate opportunity for Whitehall. For today, I only wish to request that my words from my November 2nd poll public, quote, to hear Woda Cooper soft sell the enclave, hard sell, on November 3rd, unquote, be stricken from the record because I misspoke. Please declare by whatever means you can to strike these words and replace them with, quote, to hear an attorney-sponsored Wuda Cooper imply at its November 3rd meeting with residents 
that an enclave would be built, unquote. My excuse for misspeaking lies in the fact I had employed logic in assuming that council would themselves meet with citizens in some town hall style event to explain why they did what they did on the enclave fiasco. Lastly, does council have any spare blank recall petitions laying around asking for a friend, a legal expert friend? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mr. Dixon. <coughs> Gerald Dixon, is this on? I don't think, this is ever I don't think it has been either. It, it, it turns on and then it turns off. That's fine, I have a stage voice. Hey, Mr. Dixon, if you like, you could take your mask off. That big work to beat it. Gerald Dixon, 3877 Doney Street. I just wanted to say uh, thank you to those that were here last week uh, who graciously welcomed me and congratulated me on the win uh, during the election. Uh, night. I wanted to say I appreciate that. Uh, I'm a writer for a reason. I can sit down, collect my thoughts, and put it down in an eloquent fashion. As someone speaking extemporaneously, not as good, because I'm always swirling words around, trying to get the right one. Plus, I don't like speaking in front of the public, as you might hear a tremor in my voice. These are facts. So I would like to try to uh, put together the words that I want to say now, simply. Uh, I have spoken with a great many of the citizens in Ward 1 and know how they feel about the uh, Uta Cooper uh, building going up and uh, five-story buildings and corridor, uh, I can't think of the word right now, uh, the corridor zoning changes. And I will have some questions after the meeting. It'd be nice to see some council folks stay and, and either ask questions or see what the citizens say. But I feel that the citizens, uh, certainly of Ward 1, have been passionate. Uh, and I feel that they are righteous in what they say. I feel that their, their feelings and what they have stated have been very valid. Uh, and people have come up here very passionately asking you for certain things, including myself, of which it, it seemed that you don't listen. And I think that it's <coughs> starting to catch up, not just to this council, but to the, the citizens, and they're, and they're tired of it, because you're supposed to be representing them, and them first. And so when they come up here, and however passionate it may be, I think that it's uh, justified, and it comes out of caring about their neighborhoods. And I think that uh, they are rightful in those feelings, as they've stated many times, both in public hearings and letters and, and emails and everything else. And I just want to say that. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Is this on a different subject of what you've already spoken? Because this sounds like what you spoke of earlier this evening. Oh, I'm not allowed to talk about the same thing again? That is correct. I stated that on the second part. Well, yeah, but maybe if you got your microphones to work and turn them up, we'd all be able to hear you and take I, your masks off. But it, it, does, it is in council rules. It, you can come for a second time, but it's on a separate subject. Oh, I see. So let's see. What would be a separate subject? Um, I see that you're going to pass the legislation on... Um, um, Section 8 housing and um, making it um, against um, the law, uh, 
landlords can't discriminate based on income, is that right, which would include Section 8, is that correct? Can I talk about that? Yeah. So I have no problem with that because I agree with you. Everybody should have a fair shot at housing, and if they've got the housing voucher, that, that's fair. But the reality is, and I think some other people have mentioned it, that's not exactly what happens with Section 8 housing and other low-income housing. We know because you got torn down two whole areas that was low-income housing. <laughs> they were the biggest crime-ridden areas in the city, weren't they? And now you bring it up, I can't mention our neighborhood. So uh, the reality is uh, low income housing, it brings crime to the city. People that come, in fact this goes with all rental properties, they have no involvement with our city. They could care less about our neighborhoods. They could care less about the trash they throw all over our grounds. We have to hire somebody to come and clean up the trash all the time. It's so bad in our city. So the reality is, that that's the reality of Section 8. I agree with you, it should not be discriminatory, but this is really, it's about behavior. It's not about race. It's not about anything else. It's about behavior. And when you bring in subsidized housing, then you bring in problems for the community. If you bring in any rental properties, oops, can I mention that? Because I did, I think, just a little bit about the problems we're having with single-family rentals in our neighborhood. That's the reality of it. And you should be addressing that. Okay, we're going to allow all this. What are you going to do to protect us so that it does not impact our neighborhood? And you guys have done nothing. You've done nothing on the rentals that we already have in our neighborhood. But boy, you're willing to bring all this commercialism and all this traffic and everything else to our neighborhood. And I guess I'm not allowed to discuss it, but I will say one thing. Um, since Mr. Elmore showed up again, and I'll say it to Councilwoman Elmore too. Ward 1 is not your business. It's our business. And Mr. we're Hobson, the ones that will have the consequences. The Thank you. <coughs> Seeing no one else coming forward, I will now open up community day for it. Yes, Karen, I'm looking at you. You are looking at me. I do know that this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, there is a play over at the high school. I saw something about a cheeseburger, but I didn't get the full name about it. Um, you know, I should know because my kids. <laughs> but yeah, it's a cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. That's why I'm looking at you. Uh, but you can order the tickets online or on their Facebook page. Um, it should be really good. We haven't had a play in a little while. Please come out and support. Yeah, it looks like a it's probably a funny one. I'm figuring. Yes. So probably Friday and Saturday is 7? Friday and Saturday is evening, and Saturday Sunday is 2. Yeah, Sunday is afternoon. I have it on good authority. Actually, I have a call in right now to the North Pole. So hopefully next week I'll have a little bit more information. Some big, big news. Some big, big news, yes. Santa's working right now then, all right? Mm -hmm. Is there anything else on Community Day for and that brings us to full council. Mr. Cantor. Oh, I'm first. Yeah, thanks. Good. Thank you all for coming, and thanks, everybody, for watching. And Jeff, thanks for your comment. Um, I'll be really brief. We've just lost a, a really, really good lady in the city of Whitehall, Lynn Oxendorf, Mayor Lynn Oxendorf, I should say. Um, the mayor and I go back quite a bit, all the way back to Swimlands. So a lot of you folks that are in the audience um, remember that. What a lot of people don't realize is she was a damn good athlete. And I haven't seen anybody say anything. Or um, She was a good softball player, excellent swimmer and diver off the boards down there. She was on the uh, Swimland swimming team. And she could shoot some hoop. She could shoot some hoop. I know we played horse quite a bit over there. And she'd stay back there with all of us guys back here and she, she would play. Um, she's really going to be missed, and unfortunately on Veterans Day I couldn't attend because I had other things to do on Veterans Day. That along, I just lost a, a lifelong friend um, on Veterans Day as well. So that's all I have. I just want to thank everybody for coming. As usual, girls, daddy love you. I'll see you soon. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Cantor. Ms. Heck. Uh, thank you, everybody that is watching from home, and everybody that came today. Thank you to everybody that spoke um, or wrote in, and that's all I have. 
Thank you. Mr. Morrison. Thank you, Mr. President. We'd also like to thank everyone for watching and everyone for showing up here. It's a shame that you don't show up every week. Every week. We enjoy hearing your input. You don't agree with what I have to say at times or how I act, but we want to hear it. We want to hear what you have to say. It's very important. Thank you all. Have a good week. Thank you. Mr. Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thanks, everyone, for showing up this evening. Uh, Jerry, I was not here last week, but we, Jerry and I have had a very nice conversation uh, the night of the election. I congratulate him on his win and I wish him the best. Um, uh, Zach forgot uh, or didn't mention this Poth Road. I don't know if anybody's been up that way lately, but uh, it's almost done. Uh, they, they got the top coats on. They've got the uh, uh, walk path done. I think they just got to put lights up and take, take the uh, barricades down. We'll be back in business up there. Um, yeah, it was um, Mayor Oxendorf. Um, so much to say, but I, I don't know. I just remember a, a very nice memory of her. Uh, I was in D.C. for one thing, and she was in D.C. with uh, our lobbyist for, for uh, the BRAC <coughs> over at the DSCC a number of years back. And um, I ran into her in the Union Station. So we ended up uh, sharing a train ride up to uh, Baltimore, B, uh, BMI? BWI. BWI. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they were on the same flight as I was, so we got, uh, we got serious and had a very pleasant uh, time, one of the last times that I recall in particular. So she was a really nice lady and unfortunately she had some health issues very shortly thereafter and so God bless her, she's, you know, she's at peace. That's the most important thing to, to take away. So, um, Poxville Biscom Lynn. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Ms. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you for everybody that is watching on Facebook and is here today attending. Um, let me say a couple things. First of all, I believe respect is everything. And although we may not like the decisions that are made and we not, may not like what's happening as our city evolves and changes, because change is difficult, um, it does not or should not cause us to be disrespectful and operate in a manner that is disrespectful. I have always opened myself up as a council person to be available. I have met with people, as Jerry can attest to. I, have, I write everybody back and I respond to everybody. Let me also state that I am a resident of this city of Whitehall and my husband is a resident first and foremost. As growing up as a child, Whitehall is where our family did all of our shopping, going to the grocery store, going to the cinema, going to Hearts, Big Bear. I am very familiar with Whitehall back in the 70s and even beyond that time. So as Whitehall changes, and as the mayor stated before, things were put up in different areas, blueprint, no, apparently no blueprint, but we have a blueprint that everybody has access to. Um, as I remember or recall, there was a gentleman on the very first meeting that talked about the blueprint and the fact of where Whitehall was going, transitioning, all the different things that were gonna happen within Whitehall. I would, I would say to everybody that's in the audience and even those listening, Please look at the blueprint. It will help us in our change. Change is inevitable. We cannot stay in the same place in the same time because we move as a nation, as a country, as a, as a state, and as a city, and as a suburb of Whitehall. Nostalgia, I know everybody wants nostalgia and things to stay the way that they were when they were growing up. I would say I would want the same thing too because we had a lot growing up in our neighborhood. 
But at the same time, when I look at the things happening in Whitehall, and I look at the median income in Whitehall, $35,000, there are people living in Whitehall that need affordable housing. And as the survey was handed out, a community survey, on the top of the list was affordable housing. For us to deny the citizens and residents of Whitehall affordable housing is a shame to us. It means we are not listening to the people that are participating in this thing we call community. Secondly, let me also state, because I made uh, quite a few notes here, that we are looking at a framework and a scale, and plans are flexible. When I looked at the code, there are codes that have not been changed since 1970-something. Do we need to update our codes? Exactly. Yes, we need to update our codes. It's not an, a, a testament to anybody not looking at, not caring about your neighborhoods. We care about the neighborhoods. I live on Fairway Boulevard. At the end of Fairway Boulevard, there are low-income housing. There are housing units. We've, we've had crime and everything around the, the corner from us within the areas in which we live. So crime does not have a section of Whitehall that it says we're going to do all of our crimes in one section. But I will say this, that the Whitehall Police Department has done a very good job at trying to eradicate a lot of the crime that is happening here. And we are all working together to make sure that that happens. And I don't know if anybody sitting in here who, who does not want to see this, uh, their communities, better, evolving, bringing in new talent, as well as embracing the old talent that is here and the community ex that exists. Again, I am welcome to speak with anybody, but oftentimes when there are people in the audience, a lot of people in the audience, they dart out the door as soon as we're done and I walk down there to try to speak with them. There are people in this audience today that have told me as a representative of War Ford that I better not come over to their house. Now, I canvass everybody's area, everybody, because I believe that people have an opportunity or should have an opportunity to have some dialogue and conversation. And I still welcome that. And at the end of the day, I love Whitehall. I would not have moved here and made this my permanent resident. I made a choice to move here. And I've said that several times. And I'm not going anywhere. I'm a resident here, I'm gonna stay a resident here. And I love the people, I love the community, I love the fact that it's just the right size to get a lot of things done. And if we work together, we can accomplish that. But if we are in angst with each other and come up angry and want to bad mouth and use social media to do a whole bunch of other different things, we won't move forward. We will continue to stay in the same place in little niches and pockets and areas. Then, it, it, to me, is unfathomable of the things that can happen. But together, we can do a whole lot. We can make our community as it is already. People are talking about how much we're doing in Whitehall and, and what a great job is happening here. And so I'm just saying embrace it. I'm saying if there's changes that be made, look at the blueprint. You have it within your reach. Again, my, my condolences to the uh, Lynn's family. And um, I don't have anything. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Ms. Elmore. Ms. Connison. Thank you, President Potter. Um, went to the doctor and uh, was told I have a sinus infection and also was told that since I lost my voice, I shouldn't talk. Well, that's impossible. Um, even though my husband had the best Saturday of his life. Um, <laughs> You know, we're, we're not going to always agree with everything, but I tell you what, I can look out here, and even though we disagree, we, we can be friends. We really can. Um, I live in Ward 1. I live right by everybody here. I love my neighborhood. I live south of Maine. I always, you know, everybody always teases south of Maine, you know, you're not really Whitehall. Um, but but we, we certainly are. We, you know, we have our share of problems as well, um, which is one of the reasons I had started my neighborhood watch in the first place. 
Um, what, uh, what I did was, is I made sure that I went to every single one of my neighbors. Um, we were having some problems over at the Andrus Apartments. And so what did I do? I knocked on every one of their doors and I gave them a flyer and I said, here is what we're doing. We got a neighborhood watch and we'd love to go ahead and talk with you and um, come to our block party and uh, you know what, let, let's go ahead and let, let's have a hot dog together. Um, and our, all of our neighbors came out and we all had a good time and now we all are looking out for one another. I wasn't thrilled when, when children's services were coming in. That was my neighborhood. But what I found is they have been a great partner. They've been a great community partner. They have embraced my neighbor neighborhood. They also came out to my golf party. So you're my friends. Uh, you know what? I, I, we're all community. We're not going to always agree with one another. We're going to disagree. We're going to agree. We're going to fight. We're going we're gonna to be happy with one another. That's just how things are. But please continue coming. Please continue voicing. That is the only way that we can go ahead and make change and change for the better and change for what you want. And that's all I have. Well, I will, uh, Mr. President. Yes. If I may add something. I know I already closed, but I have, I have something I'd like to say about this subject. Yes, please. I don't know how many of you remember Fairway Apartments up there. How many years that this city went through fighting the blight and the crime and how many citizens, some sitting in this room, complained about that crime and wanted the city to do something about it. And then when the movement came to do something about it, those same people's complaining, well, you're doing away with low-income housing. You're running people out. You can't have it both ways. You can't have a blighted area of crime and clean it up and rebuild. And now there's people in this room here saying, oh, it's okay to build, but just not in my neighborhood. Give things a chance. Like these council people have said, there are changes coming. I, I believe, I've been on council now eight years, and I believe this city has advanced tremendously, both economically, residential, and in industry. So, quit the double talk, and be honest with yourselves. That's all I have to say. Thank you. I would just, a few comments myself. Um, Speaking again on Lynn, uh, I had the opportunity to work with her. As a matter of fact, when she was sitting in this very chair, I was sitting in this very chair for many years. She was uh, to my right. And the one thing, as I mentioned earlier, that really radiated through her was her passion, compassion, and deep abiding love for the city of Whitehall. Uh, obviously, graduated here, and she was involved in so many different things, not just what I mentioned earlier, but she was pride of Whitehall. She inserted herself wherever she could, and just the ownership and uh, really did a wonderful job. What, what a great advocate that uh, she was and she, again, will definitely be missed. Uh, I too would like to thank everybody for everybody coming out. A lot of passion, uh, that's good. Uh, dialogue is important on both, both sides uh, of any issue and uh, we need to uh, keep that going. Um, that is all I have and with that, I'll set the motion for adjournment. So the motion? Second. Second. Okay, well, Mr. Rodriguez, Ms. Uh, Elmore uh, made a motion for adjourning a discussion. Ms. all please call the roll. Cantor? Yes. Pat? Yes. Morrison? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Elmore? Yes. Thomason? Yes. And we adjourn at 838.